It's now time for member statements. I recognize the member for Davenport. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. On Friday, over 40,000 students from over 100 schools across this province walked out of class in a coordinated demonstration against this government's rollback of the health and physical education curriculum and the cancellation of the Indigenous curriculum writing sessions. Like many of my colleagues, including the member of St. Paul's and others, I wanted to hear firsthand from these students. At Bloor Collegiate Institute in my riding of Davenport, students told me that they took this step because they feel the government is ignoring their voices, and they said that the health and safety of their peers is being put at risk by imposing a 20-year-old curriculum. Here's what students had to say in their own words. We are here to protest against new changes to our curriculum made by our new premier, one student wrote. In health class, we will no longer be learning about same-sex relationships, online safety, or gender identity. Another student wrote, it feels, I feel it is important to learn about the LGBTQ plus community, to learn about Indigenous issues and consent and many other topics that were taken away from us. We should do all we can to restore the curriculum because the Premier wants us to basically go back in time and forget all of the progress we have made since 1998. And those are the students' own words, Speaker. Mr. Speaker, it's, a time, it's time the government listened to the voices of Ontario students, parents and educators, instead of those who seek to withhold this vital information from them. I have have here some of the letters that the students wrote. I'm going to be collecting more of them. These are their own words, Mr. Speaker, and I promised the students that I met with on Friday I would carry those words here to Queen's Park. I hope that the Minister of Education is listening. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you very much. Member Statements. The member for Ottawa West, Nepean. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. On Friday evening, twin tornadoes with gusts of up to 250 kilometers per hour slammed into the quiet communities of Dunrobin, Trend Arlington, and Craig Henry. Homes, businesses, and properties were left severely damaged. For over 30 hours, much of Ottawa was plunged into darkness. Even now, thousands are still without power. But in darkness, Mr. Speaker, there is light. It is often said that we see the very best of people in times of crisis. First responders acted quickly, ensuring that thankfully no lives were lost during this crisis. We owe our police, fire officials, and paramedics a great debt. But beyond them, the people also stepped up. Families open their doors to one another, sharing food, water, and support. Our very own MPP for Nepean, Minister McLeod, along with her friends, Councillor Jan Harder and Daryl Bartra, got to work right away setting up a command post and feeding center. Over the course of the weekend, they fed thousands of individuals who needed a hot meal. I am proud to be able to serve alongside my friend, the member for Nepean, who is a shining example of a public servant. To all of those who stepped up to help, thank you for showing us the very best of humanity, and to all of those who are struggling to rebuild their lives after this tragedy, know that your city and your province stand with you. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you very much. Member Statements. The member for Scarborough Southwest. Thank you, Speaker. Mr. Speaker, I rise today with great pride to recognize the students across this great province who participated in the walkout to pro protest Premier Ford's move to scrap the revised health and physical education curriculum. Last Friday, thousands and thousands of students sent a clear message, Mr. Speaker, to this government saying, we do not consent to this government's changes. I am proud of the schools in my riding of Scarborough Southwest that took part in this. I want to specially thank Tamara Tanaraja, who, who from my former high school, Saitek at W. Porter, who successfully led their demonstration in that high school. It was extremely powerful to listen to the students who voiced their concerns, demanding Premier Ford and his government to respect and listen to, this, to the students. Mr. Speaker, these students are concerned about their safety and health. The 1998 curriculum, that's 40 pages long, does not address bullying, cyberbullying, gender identity, or consent. It was written at a time 
when students didn't have access to Google, for example, or sexting. I am so proud to see that these students not only demanded a curriculum that reflects the modern reality of our technology addressing children's safety and protection, but they also demanded a curriculum that reflects our history, highlighting the importance of learning about our Indigenous and First Nations people, which the Premier and this government failed to address. I want to join all these students and say to this government, we do not consent to Premier Ford's move to change. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Member Statements. The member for York Centre. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. <laughs> Mr. Speaker, when fall arrives, so do the high Jewish holidays. During this time, I received lots of confused but well-meaning questions from friends and colleagues about the back-to-back-to-back-to-back -to -back -to -back -to -back celebrations in the Jewish community. So I'm delighted to offer the House the 60-second crash course. Starting with Rosh Hashanah, the first day of the Jewish calendar, Jews welcome the arrival of the new year and wish each other Shana Tova. We eat apples dipped in honey for a sweet new year, and I certainly wish that this year, being 5779, is as sweet as honey. Yom Kippur arrives 10 days after Rosh Hashanah and is Judaism's holiest day of the year. Yom Kippur is a day of atonement on which our individual fates are sealed for the coming year. It is observed by prayer and a 25-hour fast, and there is strict prohibition against all work and entertainment. It is not a festive holiday. Instead, we wish the Jewish community a good inscription for the coming year. A few days after Yom Kippur arrives the holiday of Sukkot, which arrived last night, loosely translated into huts or tents. For one week, we sit with family and welcome friends for meals on the sukkah, a makeshift hut, the way our ancestors did for 40 years in the desert on their way to the Promised Land. We kept the holidays with a day of Simchat Torah, loosely translated as the joy of the Bible. On Simchat Torah, we celebrate the receipt of Torah at Mount Sinai and the beginning of the annual cycle of reading of the Torah, which lasts for 52 weeks a year. So it gives me great joy to conclude by wishing the Jewish community of Ontario and all around the world a Shana Tova, V'chak Sameach, a Happy New Year and Happy Holidays. Thank you. Member Statements. The member for Mishkigawak, James Bay. Merci, Monsieur le Président. Thank you, Mr. Skipper. September 25th is the day of all Franco-Ontarians wherever in Ontario celebrate their Francophone pride, a day where school they uh, display the white and the green, where there will be the rays of the flag, where they are francophone. Mr. Speaker, I wish to say that the rays of the flag will not be done in the Ontario capital. It shows that the fight for language and culture is never over. And I invite all Franco-Ontarians, men and women, to communicate with the mayor of Toronto to show their deception. Tomorrow, I invite all members and citizens to come at the raise of the flag. I quit back at 9.45 and also to, to see the monument of Franco-Ontarian before Queen's Park. Even if we are not the Francophones, say bonjour in the morning. It's very little, but it's appreciated by everyone. Statements, the member for Don Valley West. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. And Mr. Speaker, let me begin by adding my personal thanks and compliments to all of the first responders and community members who've reacted and who have helped victims of the tornadoes in Ottawa. I know that our hearts go out to everyone who has lost so much. To all the hydro workers, whether Hydro One or uh, Hydro Ottawa, who have worked to restore power, have already restored power, but continue to work to get power back to families across the affected area, thank you so much. Mr. Speaker, on Thursday of this week, I will be attending the 2018 Clean 50 Summit here in Toronto, where companies and individuals who have made significant contributions to sustainability and clean capitalism will be honoured. I can assure you that there will be many questions and concerns about Ontario's direction. Our province in the last decade has been a leader 
in action against climate change. Under my predecessor, the shutdown of the coal-fired electricity plants was the largest contributor to greenhouse gas reduction in North America. Under my government, our action to require big polluters to pay and our then reinvestment in new clean technology, in housing retrofits and encouragement of clean auto and transit sector had, led, had put us on a track to meet our pollution reduction targets and to do our part to fight against climate change. The Ford government has abandoned any attempt to take on this fight that threatens the very existence of our planet. Our children and our grandchildren deserve better. They deserve our best e efforts, not deflection, not obfuscation, not outright denial. I hope that the Ford government changes its mind, gets back on track, tackles the most significant— I, I have to ask the member to withdraw her unparliamentary comment. I withdraw, Mr. Speaker. Thank you. Member statements. The member for Carleton. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I'd like to echo the statements my colleagues have made today in the House. My thoughts and prayers go out to everyone who was affected by the tornado that struck Ottawa late last Friday evening, causing particularly devastating damage to the Dunrobin, Craig Henry and Arlington Woods areas. I want to thank my colleague, Minister McLeod, for her tireless efforts in feeding thousands of families affected by the tornado. Minister Clark, for his speedy and expedient initiation of the Disaster Relief Assistance for Ontarians program, here, here. and Premier Doug Ford for taking the time to visit those affected in Ottawa. I'd also like to express my gratitude, Mr. Speaker, to Ottawa's frontline workers, the paramedics, police, firefighters, doctors, nurses, as well as city staff and all of the hydro workers for their tireless efforts to help our citizens and restore power across Ottawa. All their hard work truly paid off. Finally, Mr. Speaker, I'd like to thank the people of Ottawa for stepping up to the plate and helping each other out. Thank you to Scott Batten, Stephen Pilon, Brent Scouten, and Colleen Piercy for reaching out to me late last night and helped provide generators for a lady stuck in her hospital bed on the fourth floor of her apartment, generators for senior apartments, as well as generators for subsidized and non-profit housing in Richmond. Thank you to Graham and Neil Green of Abbey Hill Farms, who donated a truckload of corn to help feed thousands affected by the blackout. And thank you to Muhammad Ali, owner of the Shoppers Drug Mart in Manatik, who provided those affected by the blackout a place to charge their medical devices and refrigerate their medication. Mr. Speaker, it fills me with a great sense of pride to watch how our community came together during this time of need to help each other out and make sure everyone got the care and support they needed. Our city's true colors showed this past weekend, and I could couldn't be more proud to represent such an amazing city. Thank you. The member for Ottawa Centre. Thank you, Speaker. Uh, as another Ottawa member, I also rise today to pay tribute to the people whose heroism has helped our city get back on its feet and brought us closer together, as our friends have already mentioned. You know, I'm in awe of the courage by people who rose to the occasion over the weekend. The members of IBEW Local 636, the hydro workers who spent day and night restoring power, uh, the paramedics, the firefighters, um, and and the doctors, the crisis workers, and also, frankly, other public officials like myself working at the municipal level. People in Ottawa Centre like Catherine McKenney, Jeff Leeper, Riley Brockington, who kept Ottawa Centre residents daily apprised of power outages and options they had to look after themselves. I'm also touched by other local examples. Last night, I attended a free barbecue hosted by the Ottawa Mosque for residents who had lost food due to the power outage. Community organizations working like the Parkdale Food Centre, Causeway Work Centre and the Ottawa Food Bank, they all did so much to assure that the vulnerable were fed. We know with the advent of climate change, Speaker, extreme weather events are becoming more frequent and more severe. So let's commit all of us here to ensuring we reduce emissions, we toughen up our infrastructure to better protect our communities from increasingly potent natural disasters. And finally, I do want to echo what my colleagues have said. I offer my deepest sympathy to people who have lost their homes, experienced trauma or physical injury. Please contact my office if you're an Ottawa Centre resident. We have your back, and together we will rebuild our city. Member Stevens, member for Flamborough, Glanbrook. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. 
Protecting our industries and workers during this time of trade uncertainty is paramount to my hometown of Hamilton and indeed to all Ontarians. And that is why I want to thank the Premier and the Minister of Economic Development, Job Creation and Trade for being proactive on this critical issue and working tirelessly to ensure our government is doing our part for a deal to get done. Now, this includes their travels last week to Washington, as well as burning up the phone lines to U.S. political and business leaders directly. Mr. Speaker, it has been an eye-opener for me as I chair roundtable meetings with business leaders and stakeholders right around the province to discuss the implications of the current NAFTA situation. Participants have spoken passionately, and Mr. Speaker, the stakes are high. The consequences of continued uncertainty are dire. One in five Ontario jobs depend on Canada-U.S. trade and investment. And as we remind the Americans, millions of jobs on the other side of the border as well. Mr. Speaker, I look forward to hearing more of consultations in the coming weeks, and I want to assure the business leaders that we have talked to thus far that your Premier and your government are standing shoulder to shoulder with you. Here, here, here. Thank you very much. Member statements. The member for Mississauga, Malton. Thank you for that. Sometimes a child can't learn the way we teach. Counsel Ignacio Starda. Maybe we should teach the way they learn. Mr. Speaker, I would like to acknowledge members of Institute of Electrical and Electronics Engineer, Oliver Terskas, Chairman Toronto Section, Satish Saini, Chairman Education Committee, Nina and Kate, who are doing just that in GTA. With a mission to bridge the gap between engineering education and pra practical workshop, IEEE is working towards making meaningful advancements by integrating classroom studies with ongoing research and workplace practices for the best interest of engineering community and the society as a whole. Tri Engineering is a unique program with the goal to raise interest in engineering career, improve access to high quality education resources, and show students how engineering can be part of their life. Mr. Speaker, IEEE is the world's largest non-for-profit technical professional organization with 400,000 members in 160 countries that truly has a global presence. Mr. Speaker, I'm thankful to IEEE for selecting Mississauga Malton as a pilot area to implement this new and innovative program. As MPP Mississauga Malton, I'd like to welcome and applaud the efforts of IEEE. Thank you, IEEE. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Pursuant to Standing Order 38A, the member for Toronto St. Paul's has given notice of her dissatisfaction with the answer to her question given by the Premier concerning denouncing Faith Goldie. This matter will be debated Tuesday at 6 p.m. And I want to recognize the member for Spadina, Fort York, on a point of order. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, for allowing me to make this point of order. I just wanted to introduce Franz uh, Celestine, Huguette Celestine, and their friend Immaculate uh, Jonah. Franz and Huguette are the grandparents of Erica Celestine, one of our new pages. Welcome to the Legislature. Reports by committees. <clears throat>